So with the involvement that you have now with mm. some of the careers team at, at say, Schroders, yeah. is there common things that you see that are good qualities in candidates and those that are not good? Yeah, definitely. So, um, so I do, I do sort of help out in the assessment days and the insight days and things like that. And um, the one, I think the standout quality that does really separate a candidate is intellectual curiosity. And I know we've, you know, me and you have spoken about this before. Um, everyone knows that, you know, the finance finance sector, all the different industries offer um, a lot of grad programs and there's a lot of variation within that. And a lot of recruiters know that a lot of students will just sort of, you know, machine gun, take a machine gun approach and just try and hit every company in every sector and, you know, throw as many applications out there as possible um, and hope, you know, just play the numbers game, which definitely has a merit. I wouldn't apply for everything out there. I just think there's far too many, you know, there's probably a hundred grad schemes in the city, maybe more that of a decent size. I think that's impossible to, you know, you have to have, you have to be, you have to discriminate a little bit between them, between them so that your applications are high quality. But I think having intellectual curiosity, like genuine intellectual curiosity about an industry and, and showing that and demonstrating that is absolutely key. And the demonstration bit being so important because the amount of students that I meet, uh, you know, we do sort of speed interviews and things like that here. The amount, of, you know, I, I will always ask, what are you doing outside of your course? Because some will do finance, so naturally they'll be doing stuff related to the industry anyway. But what are you doing outside of your course in your spare time um, to, to, to further your knowledge or, you know, get some skills that are relevant to your, that would be relevant to your career? Now, Everyone that tells me I love investing, I love equities, always have done. Um, if they struggle to answer that question, then it's just not that compelling. Um, mm. They're not making that much of a compelling case, you know, to the interviewer that they that, that it is genuine. It's like saying, um, you know, if you ask me, Anthony, or oh, what football club do you support? And I say, I love United, always have done. You're like, oh, you know. Uh, did you watch the game at the weekend? And I don't even know who they played. And I've never been to Old Trafford. And I don't even know who their star players are. You're not yeah. going to believe me that I'm genuinely interested in Man United. <laughs> um, so, you know, having intellectual curiosity, then demonstrating it is, is, is super key. I mean, to my point that I mentioned earlier about picking subjects and things like that, if you follow what you love, I don't think that's a problem. If you're applying... Um, you know, for jobs because you feel, you, you know, you just should go into finance because you did a finance related degree or your mates are applying for finance. And that just seems like the, 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 the right thing to do. I would encourage, you know, students to you know really try and find a bit of finance that they think genuinely appeals and where they can enjoy the most, that they can have the most fun. Um, because, you know, it, it's a tough assessment process to get the internships and the tough jobs. It's then tough when you start working in these companies. Um, if you don't, I think, genuinely enjoy it and genuinely attracted to at least some parts of the role, I just don't think you'll last the course. Um, so, um, you know, you're working for a long time. So, you know, I think it's um, to, to not do something that you at least, you know, not everyone can walk around loving their job. You know, that is a, you know, that is a sort of a dream situation, but that's sort of not the reality. But I think you can enjoy a decent amount of it to make it mm. worthwhile and enjoy your career. So um, to make, and then make sure you demonstrate that well with examples to assessors is really important. And that can be, you know, the go-to one that a lot of people, oh, well, I do um, the finance society at university and that's fine. But you've got to understand the amount of people, you know, if there's 150 people in your, your university's finance society, times that by 30 universities, plus international, you know, the US universities and everything like that, you know, most people are probably going to have that as their go-to evidence for mm. intellectual curiosity. You know, so I work in equities. If someone says they love equities and they love investing, you know, I would hope, you know, a good quality candidate will be running a portfolio or investing themselves. It doesn't have to be with real money. Like I didn't have any money at university to invest, but, you know, you can run a paper portfolio, um, you know, simulations, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you're probably going to ask on a, be asked on a stock pick. Um, you're going to want to have at least probably two or three up your sleeve. Now, you don't need to be quoting, you know, the 2014 cash flow statement, but you've got to have a view. Um, I'd encourage that view to be different than the market um, view. If um, I always ask, especially if it's equities, you know, and someone says they do, you know, they they have um, 
they have a portfolio they invest in stocks i always ask them which you know tell me about one stock um now i'm not an investor i work on invest investment desk but i'm not a, an investor i'm not going to ask someone about you know the valuation multiple what adjustments they're making to the balance sheet etc cetera, etc cetera. i just want to know has this person thought reasonably sensibly through the investment case of a business mm -hmm. um and then the other thing i'd say is pick a stock that's not tesla apple <laughs> or facebook because the amount of times i hear those um or people give a stock recommendation it's one of those um you're just not differentiating yourself also you know most pms and uh, most fund managers will know the, the investment case for those stocks better than any student so mm -hmm. you know if you if you pick something pick something that's just really interesting to you if you um you know, if you if you like sport why not pick you know man united or why not pick adidas or you know just something at least a little bit different a little bit more niche and you can you know you can talk about that probably in a far better way than um than, than a company that everyone covers in the city so um so yeah, yeah sorry long long answer to a short <laughs> question number one intellectual curiosity evidence it as much as you can yeah and then like my, my final question then is that beyond application so now that you're at the level of experience that you're at in like director position what yeah. thing would you say has been something that you've had to learn in the workplace that you've had to mm. work hard at to then help that process and it doesn't necessarily where well, it could be technical knowledge but for most people i guess it's not always that because you've got to manage the bureaucracy yeah. of working in a large organization and so on so how's that journey been okay so i have three points i promise i won't talk as long as i did for the last answer so the the, the first one i'll make around the technical ability i'm not naturally technical at all my role i'd say has a reasonable amount of you know technical knowledge that, that's needed i need to speak well about equities to clients i need to have a view on these things i need to understand the investments um and the investment process well enough both of you know the, the team i work on but also peers and competitors um but ultimately you will learn the technical side whether you are technical um or not i know that the technical side of finance puts a lot, lot of people off there are elements of finance that are very very technical um I imagine you know things like trading, um, some quant fund management stuff is very very te actuarial. Um, the actuarial sector you know attracts very technical people, but there's there's this bit of a myth around finance that everyone you know can do the black skulls equation in the city in their head or whatever. It's com it's a complete myth that I think everyone loves to keep up um, because you know people make them sound cleverer than they are. If you're not technically minded, please do not be put off by a career in finance. There are, I just A, think you'll learn it, uh, and B, the, 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 the bar for how technical you need to be is a lot lower than anyone will probably publicly admit um, in finance. So that's just one thing that I've learned all of that and learned most of that. I did my CFA and whatever, but it's not that I, I just, when I speak to students, it really puts them off a lot of stuff in finance. So, it's um yeah i find it quite disheartening because um the the, the the industry needs to do a better job on, on 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 that you know marketing itself to to people that think about the world differently in terms of my experience and the, and the two things i'd say i've learned uh one was definitely humility so when i started especially when i started at schroders you know i was 26 i'd just been an international hockey player for a few years i played in holland and you know i was then a graduate I was, you know, I wouldn't say I was getting doing the photocopy and getting the T's, um, not quite that bad, but it definitely took a while to, um, to, to just, you know, I think I probably thought I was going to be doing a lot more exciting things in my first year or two than I actually was. Um, so sort of just being humble and just being quiet and listening um, was really, really important for me now. You know, I know a lot of other people have different experiences going into their grad schemes, so probably isn't as much of a sort of um, skill that they have to learn. But linked to the second one, and this is something I see across interns, graduates, not here, but most places, is, is, is just patience. Um, I was definitely a bit impatient um, at times when I think over the last few years, you know, just wanted to progress super, super quickly, you know, um, you know it was hungry to progress to get given more work to get given more responsibility that all does come and i think most places are very good at nurturing and, and developing talent over time um but you just do also have to be 
to be patient and um you know it, it's great to have hungry graduates and uh, and people like that, that that do want to take more on and things like that but um the firm will give you enough work to do you will be pushed in terms of your learning not just on the job but most likely exams and any other assessments and things that um that, that the companies have um yeah i would just encourage everyone to um as you know as my parents and colleagues encourage me to be just um just you know it will all come just um just in, in in good time and there's an advantage to being young and naive and inexperienced on a grad scheme you have free license pretty much maybe not all companies but the, the ones that i know to email pretty much to anyone in the firm to just have coffee um that is an amazing thing to go and do if i emailed someone from our real estate division or our fixed income division said oh you know someone quite senior said oh can i just have coffee and learn about your role they're going to think that i'm going to want a job there um because why does someone that's at direct level want to go and do that unless there's something business related which there might be and that's you know completely fine but as a graduate you get a hall pass to go and do that to so definitely go and do that um and then just be patient um and and and, and just um yeah just uh don't be too don't be in too much of a rush 